this month we have been looking at uh, different ways and different elements <clears throat> that go into uh, drawing a starry sky picture. And uh, this is what I would do for a, a black light effect. Uh, I Usually I will put uh, a face of Jesus uh, looking across the sky uh, in it and, and the theme of the picture will uh, have to do with uh, God's creation and and that sort of thing. But uh, today we're going to put all of those elements together uh, with the exception of the face of Jesus because I haven't taught you how to uh, to draw that yet. We'll do that in a succeeding month. But uh, I'm going to show you how I would put these together. Again, I'm working, uh, I'll be using black light chalk, but I'll be working on a uh, black background rather than uh, a white background, but it will still look the same. And uh, I'm going to show you step by step what I do uh, when I do this kind of a, a black light effect. So I'm going to turn the whites down now. There we go. There's still a few remnants of some of my earlier uh, projects this month. Uh, I'm going to take all of my chalks here and bring them over so that I have some color to work with. I should have done this before I started, but oh well. I'm going to be using some colors that I didn't necessarily use uh, in previous times. I'm going to hold those up. They may all look white in the video, but they're a whole bunch of different colors. Everything from dark blue to orange to white to yellow green. And uh, that's, that's going to be uh, the palette that I'm going to work with. Now when I, uh, when I start doing a, a star field, I always start with the nebula. Um, you know, normally when you're drawing anything you're going to draw from back to front uh, obviously that's a little bit more challenging when you're trying to think in terms of stars but uh, I'm going to use some light green and uh, throw a nebula in over here remember if you want the effect of, of some dust pillars just leave harder edges uh, around where you want that. I'm going to feather, feather this out. I'll leave one kind of cloudy pillar there. Then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of orange. And again, the main thing when you're doing a, uh, a black light uh, effect with a lot of stars and, and things in it is don't make it just so overwhelming with detail that that uh, uh, it, it, it just you know again begins to look kind of garish and gaudy that's in my opinion that's the, the biggest mistake people make with black light chalk is overdoing it using too much making making you know too much detail too much uh, uh, of everything and it just uh, it, it, it doesn't look as good so so be judicious in in the amount of chalk that you use and in where you place things um, again if if I were doing a face of Jesus it would be over on uh, this side of the paper on the left side of the paper um, and uh, so so it uh, uh, you know I would have him looking across this way uh, so that would that would be there, but uh, you know, for purposes of our illustration, I'm leaving that off. But I am putting the nebula here. I'm going to just throw a little bit more color in there, just to add a little bit more visual interest. And I'm actually going to even just throw in a little bit of blue. You may not actually see all of these colors if you look at a a star photo. Uh, but that's okay. You know, part of this is is creativity and and having some fun. Uh, the main thing is you just, you know, you don't want to get so creative. That people are trying to figure out, you know, what it is that uh, that you're drawing. So uh, you do want to remain, or retain some recognizability. Uh, okay. So there's, you know, there is a, a nebula. Um, you know, I might, if I'm doing a picture like this, I might throw in. A galaxy over here somewhere. I'm not going to make the galaxies real, real big because they will tend to dominate. And just to add a little bit more visual 
interest. I'm going to throw a little bit of blue coloring in there. I'll just drop about four pieces of chalk. I'll throw a little bit of yellow in there. Maybe just brighten up that center a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's. This is a very dark blue. Throw the earth in there. Come back with a lighter blue. I'm off a little bit of my chalk dust here. Pick up the sticks of chalk that I just dropped. few clouds in there. A little green to maybe indicate some continents. Just gonna suggest things here. Okay. And there we have Earth. If I draw Earth, a lot of times I will draw the moon be close to it just so people can figure out it's Earth in case they can't. I'm going to draw the moon a lot smaller. It can get challenging when you're trying to do a really small sphere with this big chalk. Okay, and then let's maybe throw... Yeah, let's put Put Mars up there, the red planet. It's going to be actually kind of an orange planet here. But if you look at photos of Mars, that's really what it looks more like anyway, it is more of a, uh, a rusty color. Okay. And. And you can really get carried away with the planets, so I'm probably not going to do too many more. I may throw one more down here. But it, it, can, it can very easily get away from you to where it becomes so busy that, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's just not, it just doesn't look good. Just to balance out, I am going to throw a little bit of a nebula down here in this corner. Not, not as big as the other one. Throw a couple different colors in here. And smooth feather that out. Maybe throw a little bit of green in there, just for fun. Okay, now the last part is we need our stars. That's what we actually started this whole thing with, was was doing stars. So I, uh, again, like I told you before, at the beginning of this series, I use very small chunks of black light chalk that, uh, these are usually chunks that I've been working with for a while, and... Uh, And my hand's so covered with chalk you probably can't even see those, but there are three little tiny chunks of black light chalk here. I'm going to throw them all in my mortar and pestle. There's also several other remnants of, of things in there from the previous workshop or the previous video. I'm going to do all of these at the same time. So I've got a little bit of peach, a little bit of gold, a little bit of white, and I mush them up, 
kind of mix them up here. And I'm going to put some of it in my hand. And we're going to start making our our stars that will go over everything else. Now I could do a lot more of that. I've kind of used up what I had already made. Let me shake a little bit of this left over here. And we'll do maybe one more good. And there you have a starry sky with nebula and planets and everything else. Uh, I notice you know, on some of my planets I do have some stardust there, so I may go in and just kind of clean those up a bit. Not so big a problem with the galaxy. Uh, again, if I were doing this more I would fill in more of the, the black, but again you don't want to get so much in there that it just overwhelms everything else. So, now what's really cool is, again, this is all done in black light chalk. Uh, so, if I turn on regular white lights, it doesn't look very interesting. Uh, and obviously, if I'm drawing on a white background, you wouldn't even see that. Uh, but then when I kick on the black lights, God brings a great color to his universe. Uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, series this month as we have worked through... Uh, different aspects and different elements that go into creating a starry night sky. And I hope you'll play with it and have some fun. On uh, Thursday's blog, uh, I will have some resources for you uh, for drawing the night sky. So I hope you'll check back on Thursday and then uh, come back in February and we will do a whole new series of projects. Uh, it's been a great time. I hope you've enjoyed it. hope you'll try some of this and uh, be sure and have fun while you're at it. I'm Jim Pence for See the Light. We'll see you next time.